Welcome back. Just how much influence does the National Rifle Association have over Americans? According to Pew Research, 19% of all U.S. gun owners say they belong to the NRA. That's roughly 14 million Americans. However, the NRA claims to have only 5 million official members. Pew also surveyed gun owners on the influence of the NRA. 53% said it had just the right amount, while 29% said it had too much influence. Is the organization now trying to capitalize on political divides to attract more members? Joining us for more on the NRA is Susan Nylon, CEO of Nylon & Associates, attorney Jeff Young, known locally as the gun lawyer, and Ron Chapman, owner of the Chapman Law Group, who has done some work with the NRA in the past. Thank you all for being with us. You're welcome. Of course. So first of all, just want to get the <coughs> reaction to the ad. I wish that sometimes when I listen to a podcast, they say, pause this podcast, go watch the ad, and come back, and then we'll talk about it. We don't have that ability to do that here on live TV, but if you haven't seen the ad, it's definitely worth maybe just stepping away from the TV for a second or pulling it up on your phone to, to watch it. But I want to get your reaction, each of you, um, to this ad. Susan? Well, I was actually quite surprised. I, I, you know, I realized the whole purpose of advertisement is to, you know, get the attention of the viewer in hopes that they'll connect with your organization. But I thought the NRA went a little bit too far in the way they framed their message. I thought they took advantage of certain circumstances that have happened in our recent history, um, you know, with what happened with Ferguson, with the Women's March, and they framed it in such a way that I found it actually quite defensive. All right, and Jeff, your reaction? I obviously would disagree with that a little bit. I mean, I think I agree with her that the purpose of an ad is to get attention, to get people to look at it, to raise awareness for your organization and your membership. I think this was probably, you know, on the higher end of attention getting as far as ads go. But in the overall reaction to the ad, I thought it was extremely more on the opposite side than what the actual ad was intended to invoke. So I don't particularly have a problem with the ad itself. And Ron, your thoughts? Well, if you look at the ad as an ad, it did a marvelous job. It gets everybody talking about it. It's provocative. Uh, and it raises issues that are important to the NRA. Remember, the NRA is both political and informational. It does information with respect to gun owners, but it's political to drive home the rights of the Second Amendment. Interesting enough, too, everything in the ad was factually accurate. So if you're going to fact check the ad, people will say we didn't use the facts right, but we used the facts. Okay, so I see Susan kind of making a face like, maybe not. Do you not agree with that? Yeah, I don't agree with that. Um, I don't know what facts they were actually using when you start out with saying their president and their people and their supporters. I mean, all they've done is drawn a line between, you know, their group who support the NRA and everybody else. So, um, and they weren't stating any facts. They just gave really an opinion and, and, and their view, and they did it with the specific purpose to say that's them and this is us and w if it wasn't for our protection you wouldn't have the ability to do you know what you need to be doing protecting your home or whatever and from those people you did bring up a good point about saying there and they I, I got it I got the references in all parts except for when they said their schools so mm -hmm. Ron I was curious uh, to hear your response to what they meant by their schools well, exactly. I think what they meant was in reference mostly to public schools. And what they're talking about are the crazy references that teachers, and particularly in colleges when you have tenured teachers, talking about President Trump as being Hitler, talking about all kinds of things, and validating these crazy things like, like Griffin when she chops off the head of, or the fake head of President Trump dripping in blood. All the, the schools, they support that stuff. Young kids come home from school inundated that President Trump is somehow a bad president without giving them the benefit of both sets of facts. And this happens constantly. So yes, the NRA was drawing a distinction between them, the people they support, the people they want to give information to, and other people like the liberal media, the liberal press, the liberal people that basically, you know, I don't know what they stand for. But do you think, Jeff, maybe that was an overreach to, to say that all schools are perpetuating that, you know, anti-Trump message? Well, I mean, as was pointed out, they didn't say all, they said there. So I, I do think the point of the message, uh, the ad, was to draw a distinction between one side and the other side, whether it be left or right, gun owners, non-gunners, gun owners, et cetera. I mean, we can't ignore the fact that that's where we are in America in 2017. It basically is us versus them on both sides, because the left uses resist as their mantra, 
well, what are they resisting <laughs> the other side? So the NRA is simply kind of co-opting that concept and bring it into their strategy, which is perfectly in line with where, unfortunately, a lot of us believe we are as a country today. Okay, and I will get Susan, I know you're just chomping at the bit, but we will get your <laughs> response right after this. We're gonna have to go to a break and then come back with our forecast. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, we're discussing a controversial new ad by the National Rifle Association calling on its members to fight, quote, violence of lies with a clenched fist of truth. Our guests tonight are Susan Nylon of Nylon Associates, Jeff Young of the Law Office of Jeff Young, and Ron Chapman, owner of the Chapman Law Group. Thank you all for being with us and continuing this discussion. And I told Susan we would start with her and get a response to some of the comments we made in our earlier sure. segment. You know, I always take issue when people say, and th nothing personal, but because a lot of people say it, liberal media and liberal colleges, and the truth of the matter is that, it, that is actually not true. If you take a look at the media companies out there, only six media companies own all of our media companies, and Rupert Murdoch himself, you can't call him a, uh, a liberal, and yet he owns a, at least 30% of it. Uh, Jeff Bezos, uh, he's a libertarian. Um, you know, I could go on with a few others. To talk about the universities, look at our own FSU. Koch brothers have a major investment in FSU. And who are the universities that are actually inviting all of the conservatives to come and speak? Now, granted, I, I gather the students aren't that thrilled about it, but again, the universities are opening that door to have those conversations. And the problem I have is that if we keep perpetuating this idea, people don't investigate it. They just assume it's true. And that's what the ad does. It just reinforces all these things that are actually incorrect in in perception but doesn't it seem like this is not the first in that theme or that realm of just that like you mentioned the us versus them mm -hmm. it's kind of the theme of yeah, both sides you know it seems like you put one thing out from one side and it incites anger on the other mm -hmm. and then that person puts out and they have backlash and it just kind of goes back and forth so how do we stop that and find some kind of middle ground instead of just fighting back and forth well we don't have an ad that pits us against them is a really good place to start but that's not appropriate logic in this case NRA is an organization that promotes gun ownership. It's also an organization that is political. They produced a political ad to do exactly what it did. And you can't judge against them and say, well, they shouldn't be able to do this. I mean, look what we talk about. They talk about the ex-president. They're talking specifically about President Obama. When you had Occupy Wall Street, he basically came out in favor of Occupy Wall Street. They destroyed buildings. They destroyed businesses. They turned over police cars. They started fires. And we applauded them. You have Black Lives Matter. Yes, Black Lives do matter, but not when they're rioting, not when they're causing problems. You bring out the police to prevent that, they fight back, and guess what? Now they're on the chopping block, and the same media comes out against the police. So NRA took advantage of an opportunity to create an ad that is creating controversy. It's exactly what you want an ad to do. And if it drives up membership, that's great. If it gets people talking, that's great. It's doing exactly what a private business intended it to do. Right, should we be um, putting a business down for promoting their business? Absolutely. That's kind of what the point that you're making. And, and Jeff, do you see um, the fact that maybe there is all of this backlash, of course, making the, as you pointed out in Adam's story, making the ad more popular, people getting fired up just adds to it. You know, we hear no publicity is bad publicity. So, you know, so um, your thoughts on this just kind of snowballing as people get more and more angry about it. Yeah, I do find the ultimate irony here to be that the NRA puts out these ads all the time and they're generally intended just for the members. They show up on their channel, their YouTube, they get sent out in emails. But again, the, ir the irony here is that the extreme backlash, and I will say, I agree with her, it is insane. The backlash that has come out against this ad has given it more publicity than it ever would have gotten. If people had just kept their mouth shut about it, it would have popped out there. A few members would have seen it. It wouldn't have been a big deal. But when it's all over all the TV shows and the pundits get all crazy and it's being played on news stations, it's getting far more exposure than it ever would have gotten. So I think he's correct. The NRA got exactly what they wanted out of this ad. I think they played all these people and they bit right into it and now they're sitting in the high spot. 
And what was it about this one in particular? Because I have been on the YouTube page, and there are similar ones. I mean, not, maybe not that exact, you know, maybe not as intense, but there are similar videos on there. So what was it about this one that got so much attention? Well, I think it was the belief that they think that there's this call to violence at, at the end with this throwaway line about the clenched fist of truth. And I, mm -hmm. the ultimate actual irony about this argument is that for them to say that the NRA is advocating violence when what we've seen is all the violence is on the other side. They're the ones assassinating the president in the park. They're cutting off his head. The, it's a Bernie Sanders supporter who took one of these evil guns and tried to assassinate dozens of Republicans during a charity baseball practice. So the irony that they would say the NRA is calling for violence here when all of the violence that we've actually seen, which is what's depicted in this ad, have all come from, quote, the left or the anti-firearm side, I think is ironic, because clearly none of the violence is coming from NRA members, or we'd be hearing that all over the place as well. Yeah, and I don't think that's actually true. And I think there's, again, accusations are not founded. Nobody's actually done a study. And yes, you're right. They look at a voter ID card and see, oh, this person's labeled a Democrat. And so all of a sudden, they become, it's a liberally motivated. And I'd be more than happy if we have another hour to show you all the violence that comes from all sides, not just uh, n not just quote unquote the liberal side and I'm sure that everyone who was protesting at Ferguson the last thing they were thinking about was politics they were thinking that they have an issue with how the police handle their community it had nothing to do with politics and I think that's part of the problem is we always tend to politicize these issues and take full advantage like the two gentlemen just said they they capitalized on something and what made it egregious is before they talked about an idea now they actually talk about groups they talk about they call out names. They take uh, the, all the millions, millions of people that went to the Women's March and they said that we were a violent crowd. And I can assure you the only violence that happened in D.C. was the day before at the inauguration. But you had several million people on the streets and not a single uh, problem occurred uh, you know, no law enforcement had to be called out and anything, and yet we perpetuate this idea that we're all out there promoting this mentality, and it's just not true. The only thing I would say is that that's what they've been doing to NRA members and gun owners for years, is lumping us all into this group of people who are just crazy knuckle-draggers owning their firearms that are in favor of all these mass murders that go along. So. Is it a little bit of a tit for tat? Have we reached that point in our country? Probably. Is that just a point? When we're speaking of the women's movement, isn't that where Madonna got up and said she dreams of hanging the president? And she was blowing applauded. Up the White House, yeah. Blowing up the White House. She was applauded. People didn't come out and outrage the next day and, oh my God, Madonna, the women's movement. No, it was what an empowered woman can get up there with free speech and say what she wants to yeah. say. Yeah. Well, and you guys the NRA, excuse me, the NRA is saying what they want to say. When Black Lives Move, when the, the Black Lives Matter movement uses Ferguson and tapes of, of police officers, by the way, which were vindicated from any police brutality, guess what? Nobody goes in outrage. You don't see the conservatives in outrage. Oh, they're using these tapes or doing whatever. It's the same thing. But Susan, I mean, do you see the point being made here is that, you know, the video that was shown in that ad, I mean, it is mm -hmm. realistic Absolutely. video. There was a lot of violence at many of those of, protests. Of course there was. Yeah. There's violence all throughout history. And yes, we can take a snippet of that violence and say, oh, this is the reason that there was violence. And the ad says, you know, thank God for the NRA, because if it wasn't for us, you wouldn't be protected against them and as I said before that we all know that that um, that riot had absolutely nothing to do with the issues that are brought up on the NRA and again I think that we can nobody says that they can't have this ad you know it's funny they protect the Second Amendment right but they ignore their First Amendment right which is what we support and yes they pe people say offensive things and not everybody standing next to them agrees we're just saying that it doesn't help the situation. Okay, Ron, hold that thought for our <laughs> final thoughts because we do have to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will have those final thoughts from our guests. Plus, what some of our viewers are saying about Friday's topic, which was an analysis of the week in Washington. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The National Rifle Association has a long history of getting involved in politics, but is new messaging by the organization deepening partisan divides in our country? Our guests join us for their final thoughts. And we are going to start with Ron, because I know he wanted to get something in before we had to go to commercial break. Well, just before the break, Susan was mentioning that the NRA ignores the First Amendment rights. This ad does nothing but that. This ad points out the fact that First Amendment rights were exercised by the media, by schools, by Hollywood, by people promoting the ex-president, 
and they just simply turned the First Amendment and used it to promote their ad. So tit for tat, what's good for the goose, good for the gander. All right, and Jeff, uh, your final thoughts on our discussion tonight. Sure, I, I'm just going to kind of try and keep things in perspective. With all the things that are going on in the, in the world today and in our country in particular, I think the response and the issue with this ad is so far out of proportion that people are worried about how they're going to eat, how they're going to pay their mortgage, what their kids are going to go to school. To sit here and waste all this media time, I mean, I enjoy it because I get to come on and hang out with these people, but the amount of time that people are spending worrying about things like this little 30-second ad when all the other stuff that's going on in the world today, to me, I think it's a, a, a bit overblown. It's kind of a waste, and I think we should kind of put aside a lot of this stuff and just kind of get to important things and not be so offended and upset about every little thing that comes on YouTube. My turn. Mm -hmm. I, I would say that I, you know, I, I would concur with that. But then I would also add that, um, you know, I don't think anybody really condones violence. I think they play upon the idea because they want you to feel that they're protecting you, and without them, you know, you'd have total bedlam. Um, but the truth of the matter is, is that the viewer has the total power. Um, you don't like it, turn it off. You don't like what the NRA represents right now, throw in your membership. Same thing on the other side as well. Any liberal organization that you're a member of, if you don't like the direction, I know a lot of Bernie uh, supporters have done that, and that's really where the power lies. But, and these gentlemen are right. Every time we talk about it, we put it back in the face of everyone else, and some, some things don't deserve that kind of attention. Right, and I think people don't realize when they're sharing it on social media, mm -hmm. when they're commenting on it, if they mm -hmm. don't like it, that's just giving more views, more attention. So you do have to think about that sometimes. Like, if I don't like this, do I go on an outrage on social media, or do I just make my point stronger than, you know, yeah, exactly. fighting someone else's? Well, we do thank our guests for being with us tonight, but before we want to share some thoughts about what our viewers were saying on Friday's topic, that was our analysis of the week in Washington. The major headline out of the White House that day was the resignation of Press Secretary Sean Spicer. After six months on the job, Spicer decided to step down. The announcement came the same day Anthony Scaramucci was picked as the new communications director for the Trump administration. So we asked you, what do you think about this staff shakeup? Nancy Nyberg writes, no administration is perfect. If everyone used all of their energy to fix the problems in this country, we might get somewhere. No one is perfect, but we as a country cannot keep fighting each other. Grow up and do your jobs or resign. Joy Felice writes, the White House floor is crumbling thanks to Trump and it's sending everyone scrambling. It's amazing how many people who voted for Trump are closing their eyes and ears to what's really going on here. And Carol Journey writes, I think it's time for the liberals to, quote, call off the dogs on this Russia malarkey, except that President Trump is our president and let him continue his job of making America great. So what do you think about the National Rifle Association and these new advertisements that they've been producing and putting on YouTube? You can join tonight's conversation by visiting our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news at 7. You can also go back and watch past discussions on demand like the one we were just discussing from Friday. Those are available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and on Roku. Roku, thanks to all of our guests for being here tonight. Susan Nylon is the CEO of Nylon & Associates. Jeff Young is an attorney at the law office of Jeff Young. He's known locally as The Gun Lawyer. And Ron Chapman is president and owner of the Chapman Law Group and has worked with the NRA in the past.